Welcome to SoTex. In this video we will talk about quantum computer. This is perfectly a voice tutorial. So let's start, why quantum computation? The history of computer technology has involved a sequence of changes from one type of physical realization to another from gears to relays to valves to transistors to integrated circuits. And on. Today's advanced lithographic techniques can create chips with features only a fraction of micron wide. Soon they will yield even smaller parts and inevitably reach a point where logic gates are so small that they are made out of only a handful of atoms. So quantum computer uses quits instead of bits, now what is quits? From a physical point of view a bit is a physical system which can be prepared in one of two different states representing two logical values, no or yes, false or true, or simply zero or one. Quantum bits called quits are implemented using quantum mechanical two-state systems, they are not confined to their two basic states but can also exist in superpositions, effectively this means that the quit is both in state 0 and state 1. Any classical register composed of three bits can store in a given moment of time only one out of eight different numbers, a quantum register composed of three quits can store in a given moment of all eight numbers in a quantum superposition. Once the register is prepared in a superposition of different numbers on can perform operations on all of them. Thus quantum computers can perform many different calculations in parallel, a system with n quits can perform two raise to n calculations at once. Thus has impact on the execution time and memory required in the process of computation and determines the efficiency of algorithms. How powerful quantum computers? For an algorithm to be efficient, the time it takes to execute the algorithm must increase no faster than a polynomial function of the size of the input. Think about the input size as the total number of bits needed to specify the input to the problem. For example, the number of bits needed to encode the number we want to factorize. If the best algorithm we know for a particular problem has the execution bounded by a polynomial then we say that the problem belongs to class P. Problems outside class P are known as hard problems. Thus we say, for example, that multiplication is in P whereas factorization is not in P. Hard in this case does not mean impossible to solve or non-computable. Means that the physical resources needed to factor a large number scale up such that, for all practical purposes, it can be regarded as intractable. However some quantum algorithms can turn hard mathematical problems into easy ones. It's clear that technology will support quantum computing more in future. This is a quantum computer in D-Wave. Inside this has a chip like this and the requirements. This is the arrangement of the chip. This chip has provided by very low temperature. The challenge to make them more practical for everyday use is to make them work at room temperature. So that's it thanks for watching this is my first video on this channel comment on what you think of this video please subscribe this channel for more upcoming videos I will catch you on the next one. Once again, thanks and see you bye.